Welcome to another edition of SpaceX News. Today, Starlink delivered, but Booster 1056 lost at sea and no fairings recovered. What now for reusability? SpaceX has announced an agreement to fly tourists into space. But first, let's take another look at Starship construction in Boca Chica. And welcome back to Boca Chica. We have the completed top half of the nose section with the very tip of the nose cone now attached and this has been welded to the very first part of the nose cone. You can see how the steel is warping or wobbling as it is being placed on top of the lower section and that looks fabulous. The same thing is happening to the cylinder sections being lifted by that new very large berry crane and welded but not without some puckering as you can see here Elon Musk has commented that the next Starship serial number two is coming together with less of this puckering. Now, you may remember in a previous video I was concerned about the air quality inside these hoods on the cherry pickers and here you can see there is a good gap between the cherry picker and the hull and I'm sure in Boca Chica's breeze there's going to be a lot of ventilation in that gap. They've bubble wrapped those cylinders, perhaps to insulate them. There's some speculation that they were going to contain cryogenic methane, supercooled methane. As construction has progressed, they have developed new ways of getting inside the hull. Here you can see them being lowered from that enormous berry crane in a cradle inside the methane tank. And the completed tank sections were welded together and transported on this enormous 48-wheeler trailer to the launch site where it was lifted onto the launch stand by that crane. And there it is, ready to have the tanks tested. The shed is nearly complete. These guys are just walking along the roof and, and I've seen one chap I'm sure he wasn't wearing a harness, he was just walking along the girder. So this is going to be used for assembling, stacking the final starship. And this appears to be one of those machines that make the steel rings that you can see here are being stored. Here is starship serial number one waiting to be tested. There is a camper van there with a SpaceX logo on it. Somebody's parked their camper van on Elon Musk's launch site in Elon Musk's rocket factory. I think that's Elon Musk in there, maybe. So this Starship serial number one is being prepared to have its engines attached, the three Raptor engines, in preparation for a static fire, according to a tweet by Elon Musk. And as the sun set, they continued to work on it. And then this happened. Kaboom. They were filling the tank with a cryogenic liquid, perhaps nitrogen, and if you look at this different angle, there appears to be a small leak at the very base on the left. That happens a few seconds, a few microseconds before the tank explodes and takes off. If you look at this angle, you can see a car drive past just before it blows up and the top bulkhead shoots off in the direction of the car. These pictures are taken from the morning after. And that is the end of Starship Serial Number 1. But do not fear, we have Starship Serial Number 2 waiting in the aisles. If you take a closer look at these photos here, you can see what appears to be a small puncture wound that has gone from the inside to the outside of the lower Starship hull, which I think might be where that gas was venting from. So maybe there was a leak that caused cooling and thermal stress and rupture of the hull. Possibly. I speculate. Now, I was a little worried about that car. You can see in these videos that debris has gone, I think, over the road a couple of hundred metres north of the test site. But Cameron County did issue a closure notice for Highway 4 and Boca Chica Beach. 
Elon Musk has announced plans for a flotation of the Starlink service. SpaceX was estimated to be worth 33 billion in May 2019 and is seeking to bring in about 250 million at a price of $220 a share, which would value SpaceX at about $36 billion today. SpaceX has delivered another 60 Starlink satellites to orbit. Booster 1056 was lost at sea after landing next to the barge and was then deliberately sunk. It had flown on three previous occasions, including two resupply missions to the International Space Station. Here you can see the smoke and spray produced by the booster landing off screen in the ocean to the right of the barge. It's the first loss of a flight proven booster. The attempt to catch the fairing halves was also unsuccessful. The loss of B1056 is a shame, but there are other boosters in the short term, and when Starship is complete, SpaceX will be able to deliver seven times the payload in a single mission. Subscribers to the Starlink service will soon only need to buy a pizza-sized satellite dish to receive internet from almost anywhere on Earth. Starlink has caused controversy in the astronomy community for causing bright streaks across the field of view of ground-based telescopes. SpaceX has adopted measures to mitigate the glare, including applying an experimental anti-reflective coat to one of its satellites. I can report that we do have some anecdotal evidence from Groovy Video 2 that this new coating is effective in significantly reducing the glare, even prior to reaching final orbit. Groovy Video 2 stated in comments that compared to untreated satellites, the new coating is much darker, hardly visible at all. And thank you for that, Groovy Video 2. NASA has set a date of the 6th of March for the next cargo resupply mission to the International Space Station. It will use booster B059, which has flown once before in December last year on the previous resupply mission. The Dragon cargo vessel will launch from Cape Canaveral's Launch Complex 40, carrying science investigations and cargo to the station. Space Adventures has entered into an agreement with SpaceX to carry tourists into space. SpaceX will fly paying customers on the Crew Dragon. Up to four private individuals will be able to fly on the autonomous spacecraft, which has just successfully completed a test of its launch escape system and is due to fly NASA astronauts to the International Space Station perhaps as soon as May this year. SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell said, this historic mission will forge a path to making spaceflight possible for all people who dream of it. Space Adventures has previously arranged flights to the International Space Station on board Russia's Soyuz rocket, and in 2001 sent Denis Tito, the world's first private individual, into space. Katherine Johnson the NASA mathematician who helped calculate the trajectory of the 1969 flight to the moon has died at the age of 101. Having excelled in mathematics and graduating from university at the age of 18, she worked as a teacher and researcher. She started working for NASA's predecessor in 1953, aged 35. Her job title was computer. She had responsibility for calculating trajectories for the early US space missions and in 1961, she calculated the trajectory for the spaceflight of the first American in space, Alan Shepard. The following year, she did the same for John Glenn, who became the first American to orbit the Earth. Her reputation for rigour was such that he refused to fly unless she, specifically Katherine Johnson, had verified the calculations of the electronic computer. Barack Obama presented Johnson with the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2015, saying, Catherine G. Johnson refused to be limited by society's expectations of her gender and race, whilst expanding the boundaries of humanity's reach. Thank you for watching this edition of SpaceX News. If you haven't subscribed already, feel free to do so. Thank you to those who have already subscribed, and also for your comments, they're great. I shall see you again very soon.